you kept insisting that this is really where custom shines is in preventing uh, TMJ problems from occurring with yep. the with the plating of the mandible. Yep. And you said, okay, you see this right here, you see how this plate is in the same plane as the mandible, yep. this is good. We're, we're sure that we're gonna get a healthy TMJ because of this custom plate telling us, giving us this information, acting right. as a GPS on this ramus yep. to guide us and make sure that the condyle is properly seated. Could you maybe like explain in technical terms yeah. how custom prevents what TMJs, yeah, TMJ issues from yep. arising post-surgery? Yeah, and I'm glad that it's not a mystery to you anymore either, right? This is something that you were able to understand yeah. uh, from seeing it. So traditionally, and it, you know, TMJs can worsen after jaw surgery, after orthognathic surgery. There's, there's concerns for that, um, especially people that have predisposed TMJ issues. They were even more at risk to developing more issues after surgery is, is, is a right. big issue. Um, so there's, you know, uh, like a hesitancy to make large movements, even use a BSSO in some of these people. There's something that we used to do called a condylectomy or IVRO and vertical, a vertical ramus, intraoral vertical ramus osteotomy, where we just cut down straight. Yeah, uh, and, bro, uh, yeah, where we just cut down straight here and then wire the mouth shut and not even put a plate to just leave the condyle hanging in people that were at risk for TMJ problems. So it was, there was an issue in that. And we didn't really understand what, why that was. And uh, it, I didn't really understand it until I transitioned to the custom and I got information from the custom plates that, that told me what was happening pre-custom and I'll explain it and what's happening now with custom. So when you make a sagittal split osteotomy, that's, a, that's what we call the cut in the lower jaw. So the cut goes from inside the lower jaw right here inside the lower jaw down obliquely and then here so you have these two segments that are split and now this segment can telescope in any way in the surgery now this segment is free from this right and the surgeon is taking a plate bending it conforming it and plating from here to here once the mouth is wired shut now when they're doing that this part of the jaw the back part of the free segment, we call it the proximal segment. It's a segment that holds the condyle or the TMJ. Mm -hmm. There's no way to really know if it's torqued this way or that way or that way. Right, Tor this, torqued out toward the ear. Correct. Or uh, flayed Because this out. segment right here can be like that, like that, like that, and then we can just plate it in any direction. We can plate it torqued in, we can plate it torqued out, and it's blind because you're just looking over here. There's no way to know what's happening. So even if it's a millimeter difference, if there's some bone interference and it's preventing it from coming to the right place, you don't know that because it's just uh, all the information's only at the teeth level. And j just because... I take it for granted that I know what you mean by torque because right. to, you know I've been with you all week. But torque, like if imagine an MSDO surgery where you're splitting the mandible here and then torquing out, expanding it, like at the opening mid -line. a book. Yes, exactly. Right. Opening the book, pat yeah. manning the mandible. Yeah, basically. and then what happens? Is that pivot point is going to rotate. That's the condyle. If you look at my thumb, it's the condyle. You can plate it here. You can plate it there, and it's going to put different forces on that TMJ. There's muscles and ligaments attached to it. And if you rotate it too much one way or the other, inappropriately or unknowingly, we're gonna get damage on that TMJ. And that's not something that anyone really can appreciate until they do a custom case. Because with custom, the plate, as you can see here, is flush with the bone in the correct position. So when we plan it, we can plan it with the TMJ neutral in the right position. And when I put the plate on the proximal segment and I align it to the distal segment, if it's flush on both segments, I know that these are behaving the same way as they behave on the plan. Right, on the plan, you, you plan for TMJ health. T plan for TMJ health, yep. And the, the plate forces you to preserve that plan. Right. Specifically in this dimension of being flush with on both sides. Specifically in that dimension, because if you put it and it's flush on the back, but it's a little raised in the front, it's yeah. a millimeter or two off the bone, but it's seated. The bone is seated because there's interference 
in between the segments, but it's not letting that plate sit all the way, that means that this is torqued. Right. And there's no way you would know that if you were just plating it, because you would just take that seated position and plate it. Right. There's no measurement that it's you impossible. even with traditional, there's it's no impossible. ruler. There's that nothing can, that can tell you. And you didn't even realize like I didn't realize that until I started understanding and using custom, because then now I know that it's, it's pretty often where you put it and it's a millimeter off and I'll know that I'm not ready to plate it because if I plate it, I'm just going to rotate that con. I could plate it, but I'm going to rotate that con. It's not going to be healthy. So instead I'll look at the plan again. We usually have illustrations of to know where uh, to anticipate some interferences, some some early premature bone contact, and I could relieve that bone and then get to where I planned. Right, right, yeah. That's um, and that sort of speaks to the unpredictability of developing TMJ disorders after surgery. Correct. It's almost like the surgeons didn't even know. They didn't what, know what and, they were doing. And a lot of them it. still don't really understand that unless they really start doing the procedure this way, then it's like a light bulb. Like, ah, look at all this information I have now. I yeah. was for sure torquing those condyles, not knowing it. And that explains why some people had some unpredictable, unfavorable results with their joints after surgery. Now the instead, we're seeing an entire paradigm shift and even philosophy where TMJs become healthier consistently and predictably after surgery. And um, how do you plan for TMJ health in your pre-surgical planning? Like what's the workflow there? Yeah, so the workflow is whenever we're planning for surgery, we're always positioning the TMJ in an appropriate position. Um, and we do that um, you saw how we do it. We use, I'm there physically guiding them into appropriate bites. And then we make sure on the seat, cone beam CT, that the joint looks like it's in a neutral position. That way we're planning off a good position. Then when I'm planning, I make sure that I don't want to rotate that condyle um, in a compromised place. I want to keep it as neutral as possible. So it's not putting undue forces uh, with the ligaments or muscles. So in a sense, would you say that the whole surgical plan is kind of built around condyle, condyle position? Yeah. Like that's your starting point? That's your starting point. And you just go Definitely. off from there? Yeah, and that's, that's I'm in the room every time for those and that's because that's a key component of the planning process is to make sure that the TMJs are uh, looked at. So then the only uncertainty when it comes to TMJ health becomes like the orthodontic component? Like yeah, because you would need could, to finish the bite in a healthy way. Right. Yeah. And that's a collaboration with the orthodontist. It's very important that the surgeon and orthodontist are working together and understanding and, and making sure that the bite is finishing in a good place. Because otherwise you can do an amazing operation, but um, the teeth are not controlled well and the bite is not healthy and that continues to age the joints.